when I look up at the night sky, uh, and I see stars, what comes to my mind is just what a big process had to take place for us to be here. Nearly every atom in our body has been inside a star at one time, and in fact, most of them were formed inside stars. So famous astronomer Carl Sagan said that we are star stuff. He meant it literally, that every part of our bodies was produced inside a star. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he shall make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night. So for Juliet, she's not only describing the person she loves in terms of heavenly beauty, but taking the person she loves and transporting him into heaven, turning him into now the object that can control fate and the workings of one's life. Um, so that Romeo, if he were turned into a star, would stand for not only that which is beautiful, but would stand for that which would have control over her destiny. The movie industry is a hype industry, and they wanted to hype what they had. And what, what burns brighter than a star? And one of the people who really understood this and used the term stars more than any other producer was Louis B. Mayer at MGM. And throughout the 1930s, he used to have a slogan that MGM has more stars than there are in the heavens. The knowledge of the world and of science and traveling, cartography and navigation is pretty much consistently a story of us in relationship to the stars. Now it's enabling us to explore the mysteries of the universe and those are the frontiers that are only beginning to be explored. The New Horizons mission to Pluto was dependent on using computers and optical measurements of the positions of the background stars to the motion of the planet. Humans were able to pass a spacecraft very accurately through the eye of a needle to bring back those marvelous photographs of Pluto. In ancient Egypt, when you see a star, often, say, on the ceiling of an ancient king's tomb, the star connects to the afterlife. So it wasn't the night above us, but sometimes it was thought of as the night around us, the night below us, the night through which a person who had died proceeds for all eternity. In Buddhism, this is how the Buddha's enlightenment is described. He was sitting in meditation underneath a tree. This tree is later called the Bodhi tree, the tree of enlightenment. And he was meditating into the early hours of the morning and enlightenment, that bingo moment, happened when he opens his eyes, looked up, and saw the morning star. That sighting of the morning star, in a way, marked the beginning of Buddhism as a religion. As a linguist, we engage in the scientific study of human language. A linguist is going to be interested in what are possible utterances in any given human language and what are not. That latter is marked in our scholarly communications with an asterisk. If you look up the word asterisk in the Oxford English Dictionary, you see that it was used in the 1700s to mean little star or a starry shaped item. Who knew that that little star had such a long scholarly history? So from everyone at USC Dornsife, we wish you happy holidays.